Are the Chronicles of Narnia racist and sexist? That's what today's video is about. So here are the ac accusations. Philip Pullman says, It is blatantly racist. One of the girls was sent to hell because she was getting interested in clothes and boys. A.N. Wilson says, Only one of the children from the original quartet is excluded from heaven. This is Susan. She has committed the unforgivable sin of growing up. Kath Filmer says, What is disturbing in the Narnian Chronicles, as well as in the whole range of Lewis's literary corpus, is the way in which ultimate good is depicted as ultimate masculinity, while evil, the corruption of good, is femininity. Pullman again says, Boys are better than girls, light-colored people are better than dark-colored people, and so on. Susan is like Cinderella. Like Cinderella is, is undergoing a transition from one phase of her life to another. Lewis didn't approve of that. He didn't like women in general or sexuality at all, at least at that stage in his life when he wrote the Narnia books. He was frightened and appalled at the notion of wanting to grow up. J.K. Rowling, there comes a point where Susan, who was the older girl, is lost to Narnia because she becomes interested in lipstick. She becomes irreligious basically because she found sex. I have a big problem with that. First of all, I'm a huge Narnia fan, and I don't find the, the Chronicles to be sexist or racist at all. And one of the main points they could bring up is Susan, because Susan doesn't get to go to Aslan's country at the very end of the last battle. Now, first of all, I'm going to do, do two quotes from the book that say why, and then go into some examples. Peter says, my sister Susan is no longer a friend of Narnia. Then Eustace says, Yes, and whenever you tried to get her t to come and talk about Narnia or do anything about Narnia, she says, what wonderful memories you have. Fancy, you're still thinking about all those fan funny games we used to play as children. The first point is that Susan becomes vain after Prince Caspian. She has made the, all those parties, the lipstick, and all those other things her number one priority in her life, when that should not be the number one priority at all. However, vanity can affect males as easily as it can females. Some examples are Uncle Andrew and Bree. Another point is that they kept bringing up is that she grows up, and that none of their characters do. Well, they do, and they get married, too. For example, Frank and Helen, Sashta and Averis, Caspian and Ramandu's daughter. And another good point is that she has barred herself from Narnia, from Aslan's country. Why? Because she has put Aslan and Narnia behind her to pursue being more desirable. However, just because Susan doesn't go to Aslan's country in the last battle doesn't mean she will never get there. In a letter, Lewis says that the books don't tell us what happened to Susan. She is left alive in the world in this world at the end. Having by then turned into a rather conceited young woman. But there is plenty of time for her to mend and perhaps she will get to Azan's country in the end in her own way. Another good example is that Lucy says, will you tell us how to get into your country from our world? And Aslan says, I shall be telling you all the time. So therefore, Aslan has not really given up on Susan or any of some of the other characters that don't make it to Aslan's country. He's always going to be there telling them how to get there. And then we're going to move on into what some things Father Christmas says. Uh, for example, Father Christmas tells the girls that he does not want them, that he not, does not intend them for them to fight. And some people see this as sexist. People in Narnia are called to put their unique abilities to use. In fact, Lewis should be, you know, is here, is romanticizing men's role in, role in war. However, there are several points when both girls and young kids fight. And you see in The Horse and His Boy, Sasha and Corin in The Horse and His Boy again, and Jill in The Last Battle. The heroines of the books are capable of making their own choices and can be great leaders.
uh, Polly does not get married, and she is still a wonderful leader. Some of the characters do go off and get married, like Ramandu's daughter. That's their choice. They chose that way. They chose to be that way. And another thing is that being sexist is wrong because it is a character trait of some of his villains. Those villains include Miraz, Uncle Andrew, and Rillian when he's under the spell. That's how you can tell he's under the sp under a spell is that he's being sexist. Another point is that both that there are both evil and male. I'm sorry, that both females and males are evil. Not you know. Everyone points out that, oh, the White Witch and, you know, the Lady of the Green Kingdom are evil and that he's being sexist because they're evil, but however, most of the villains are male. That includes Miraz, Uncle Andrew, Shift, Governor Gumpus, Pug, Ginger, the early versions of Edmund and Eustace, Sozapan, and Glazelle. So let's move on to the racist comments. Um, you know... Uh, what was it? Philip Pullman said that the white skin is better than dark skin and things like that. Well, white skin characters are capable of evil too. Once again, those included Miraz, Uncle Andrew, uh, Glozell, so has been the White Witch, the Queen of the Underworld, and that the people that are featured in the Horse and Rose in his boy are not representations of Muslims, they're actually pagans, and that racial slurs are evil comments by evil characters. And another thing, that there are good and bad uh, people of everything, such as the dwarves, there are good dwarves and bad dwarves, there are good trees and bad trees, just like there are good people who are light-skinned and bad people who are dark-skinned, and good people who are dark-skinned and bad people who are white skin. And that the villains are judged by their character, not by the, their appearance on the outside. Some good things that come from the Narnia Chronicles that do involve race is Dr. Cornelius from Prince Caspian. He, you know, sees the good in any race, whether they're human or dwarf. It doesn't matter. He embraces them. The mixed-race marriage of Sasta and Averis, as well as their son, Ram the Great, who becomes one of the most famous kings from their country in history. In their history. So therefore, hopefully all these examples that I've given prove that the Narnia Chronicles aren't racist or sexist. If you have your own thoughts, leave it in the comments below. I really don't find them to be racist or sexist. In fact, they're quite the opposite. In fact, another thing is that, you know, those qualities are evil qualities and that they, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't want to be racist or sexist, that we have to overcome those things in order to be good. That's how I see it. Bye. Caspian and Ramandu's daughter. Um, Victoria, can you leave? Oh, you just.